Numerical Computation, Chapter 1, Additional Video Number 1. You can use this video once you have finished all the regular videos for this chapter. In this video, we take a look at something called geometric integration. For some ODEs, they would have important geometrical properties, and these properties should be preserved by the numerical approximation. And such approximations are called geometric integrations. We take the example of the famous Lotka-Volterra equation for population dynamics with prey and predator. The system looks as the follows. There are two um, variables, x and y. x denotes the population for the prey, and y denotes the population for the predator. And then they satisfy an ODE that describes how they evolve in time. So we have x prime of t is x minus x times y, y prime of t is negative y plus x times y. And for the system, an initial data is given. So initially, you have x0 for prey and y0 for predator as the population density. Let's try to understand um, what the model is doing. First, we see that if y is identically zero, that means there are no predators, then the equation for the prey is x prime equals x. We know this is an exponential growing model. x will grow exponentially with rate 1. On the other hand, if x shall be identically zero, then this means there's no prey. And what will happen to the predator? Well, y prime will equal negative y because that term is zero. And we see this is an exponential decay. That is not surprising because for the predators to survive, they need the prey as food. The quadratic terms describe the interaction between the two populations. Let's first look at the negative xy term for the prey. This says if the predators are present, then it will reduce the population of the prey because the prey will be eaten up. And then the corresponding term here, the x times y for the y prime term, we see if there is prey, then this term is positive. That means prey feeds predator. There's more prey would causing more predator. And finally, there is an equilibrium state where x prime and y prime are zero, where the population will not change anymore. And we see that when x is one, y is one, that is an equilibrium state. So for this system, it is well known that the exact solution exhibits something called limited filters for all non-zero initial values. And the equilibrium point will be in the center of these circles in the face plane. That's a very important property Therefore, we wish the numerical solution to capture this periodic behavior as well. The simplest numerical method would be the forward Euler step. Let's set it up. We are very familiar with it. So the next value is the at the previous time step plus h, that's the size of your time step, times the derivative. Okay, starting with the initial data. And here we give a plot 
of the solution in the phase plane, meaning um, um, the x axis is the solution for x and the y axis is the solution for y. And then here is our initial point of our simulation and we see that this solution fails to um, form a limited circle. As it circles back here, it spirals out and this continues as time grows. And we know that this is a false behavior. It is not the behavior of the exact solution. We now introduce a different method called a simplistic method. Based on the Euler step, we can make a small modification. So, on the right hand side of the Euler method, after you have computed the xm plus 1 in the Euler step, and when you are computing the ym plus 1, we use the most updated value for x. So we put xm plus 1 here. This is shown in red color to see that it's different from the forward Euler step. Now this is very similar to the idea of the Galcedo iteration which we introduced in the iterative method for solving systems of linear equations. There we use the newly computed value immediately in a sequentially manner. So this can be easily um, implemented in MATLAB and we show the result. Um, as no surprise, we see that the numerical approximation now give us a limit circle. Then we will have periodic solutions. A little bit of comment on that. One can show that the lotka volterra system preserves the weighted area, the 1 over xy dx wedge dy, and this property is preserved by the symplectic method. And there are theorems that shows that a numerical method which preserves any weighted area does not spiral, that is, it will give a periodic solution. The details on that is outside the scope of this video. If you're interested, I encourage you to read on. We now look at another property that's satisfied by the lotka volterra system. Introduce a function called a Hamiltonian function as follows. h is a function of xy, is now defined as x plus y minus ln x and minus ln y. And then the lotka volterra equations can be written as x prime of t will simply be negative x times y times the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to y. And y prime of t will be positive x times y times partial h partial x. Or you can easily carry out the partial derivative and verify that. Then this Hamiltonian function is actually constant along solution trajectories. Indeed, you can verify this by the derivative differentiating the Hamiltonian putting x as a function t, y as a function t, and differentiate it in t. By the chain rule, we will have partial h, partial x, x prime, plus the second variable, partial h, partial y, y prime. And then we plug in the expression x prime and y prime inside the equation, and we'll get this with a negative sign, and this with a positive sign. And we see that this term and this term exactly cancel each other, then it's zero. This means 
h as a function of x and y remain constant as t varies. Now one wish your numerical method to preserve this important property as well. And you can um, check the Euler step and as well as the um, symplectic method. It is not hard to verify that none of those methods would preserve the Hamiltonian. A Hamiltonian preserving method is also called an H-preserving method. If you want to do that, this would result in some multi-step methods. So, first step, we want to generate a predictor. We use the Euler's method with the modification, the symplectic modification, and we call this predictor result um, with the x tilde, y tilde, with the tilde on the top. And after that, we make a corrector step in the gradient direction of the Hamiltonian. So starting from x tilde and y tilde, we take a step, we compute the gradient of the Hamiltonian right there, and we take a step of length lambda in that direction. And, and the result is stored in xn plus 1, yn plus 1. And then um, it remains to decide the value lambda, that is how big a step you would take. This value lambda is chosen such that the Hamiltonian is preserved. That is, the Hamiltonian at x m plus 1, y plus 1 with this lambda value minus the Hamiltonian at x and y n equals 0. One sees that this results in a equation which is nonlinear, an equation for lambda. One can then solve this with a Newton iteration or a secant iteration. And a good initial guess would be y equals zero because we expect this is a very small step that one takes. Okay, the students are encouraged to code this as a function in MATLAB and observe its performance and comparing its result with the simple Euler step and the simplex method. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.